loading games at 1980s speed. So you've got yourself a Commodore 64 from eBay or wherever you've sourced it and you don't have a data set. Or you have a data set but you want to load a downloaded tap file. How are you going to go about it? Well this is the answer. It's a C64 play on tape and emulates the data set for the C64. You insert a micro SD card and then using the display and these buttons on the front it emulates the data set. So let's take a look at building one of these, where to get the boards from and then finally how to upload the necessary software to get it to work. And then of course let's load the game. This is an ideal project for someone new to soldering as there aren't many components and you'll end up with something usable and cool. I started by soldering the lowest profile components in place first. Once the resistors were in place, I then soldered the ICs. Next was the capacitor and then the Arduino Nano clone. My experience with these clones is that not all are made equal. I had some that I couldn't get to connect to my computer, but these from Elegoo seem to work just fine. With the Arduino Nano clone in place, I moved on to the switches. Then the two LEDs and the IDC socket. The micro SD card reader module comes with pins bent at 90 degrees. These need to be bent back out straight. To do this, insert the module and gently push the module towards the main board so that the pins become straight. You can see a small gap between the reader and the main PCB. This will be filled with some double-sided tape. The tape I had was too thin for the gap, so I padded it out with some card. With the module held in place, I then soldered the pins and trimmed the excess legs off. The design calls for the pins to be soldered here, but I prefer the lower board to have a socket. So I will install this socket here and solder the pins to the top board later on. There are a couple of variations of these OLED displays available, as detailed on the designer's GitHub page. To accommodate this, depending on the position of the ground pin on the display, there are a couple of jumpers that require bridging with solder. Next, I assembled the boards using some nylon standoffs and bolts. The last PCB to assemble was the connector that plugs into the rear of the Commodore 64. The connector is held in place with a couple of nuts and bolts. I found I needed to squash the nuts ever so slightly in order to get them to fit into place. I then used a flat bladed screwdriver to bend the connector pins closer to the PCB before soldering them into place.
And finally, the last part was the cable. We're now at the perfect point to talk about this video's sponsor. PCBWay.com have made this video possible. PCBWay manufactures top quality PCBs with prices starting from just five US dollars. So what's stopping you from building one of these really cool C64 play on tape units? I went for a black board with white silk screen, but there is a range of colors to choose from so you can build one as unique as you are. PCB prototype the easy way with PCBWay.com. The PCBs for this project are available directly from PCB Waste project area. The link is in the description below. If you want to replicate my build, then you'll need all four PCBs. However, you can get away with a bare bones build with just the main PCB and the cable adapter PCB. This is the main PCB and is mandatory for the project. Note that there is a possibility to solder the OLED display directly to this board and do away with the top PCB. Although in my opinion, the top and bottom boards are really what make this project stand out and look so cool. This is the cable adapter PCB and it's also essential for this project to work. This is the bottom PCB. Whilst it isn't necessary for the device to work, it does make it look fantastic. The faceplate, like the bottom PCB, isn't 100% necessary, but it does finish off the project nicely. You'll find more detailed information on the designer's GitHub page and right down at the bottom here is a link to the software that we'll need to upload to the Arduino Nano. The software is actually written by someone different to the PCB designs. To download it, click the code button and then download a zip. Once downloaded, extract the zip file. I'm going to be using the online Arduino IDE and will upload the code. Therefore, I can delete these two folders as they're not actually part of the code. Before I upload the code, I'm going to create a copy of this file and rename it so that it reads config-user.h. This file is used to configure the C64 play on tape. It's now just the case of uncommenting out the lines of code that we need to use. I'm using this OLED display, so let's uncomment out this line. We also need this line, as it's the I2C address for the OLED display. I want to use big fonts, and my display has a resolution of 128 by 64. And finally, we need to define the language, so I'm going for English. Let's save this and close. The folder containing the code must be called Tapuino, so rename it. If you are using the installed version of the Arduino IDE, then just double click the file inside this folder that's called tapuino.ino. If like me you're going to use the web-based Arduino IDE, then head on over to arduino.cc and sign in. If you don't already have an account, you'll need to create one. Once signed in, click this menu button and select Web Editor. I already have the web editor open in another tab, so I'll select that now. You can ignore the code currently showing as this is from a previous project. Before I import the code, let's create a new folder to keep my files in order. And I'm going to call this folder C64 Play on Tape. Right, let's import the Tapuino code by clicking the import button. I get this message reminding me to zip the files before I upload them, which is pretty handy since I forgot that step. So back into File Explorer and zip the folder. I'm going to copy the file path so that it's easier to locate the zip file when I upload. So click import and paste in the file path. Here's my zip file, so select that and click open. Sketches successfully imported, fantastic, let's move on. Here's my uploaded sketch. Before I do anything else, I'm going to move it into the C64 folder as I like to keep things nice and tidy. So let's right click and select Move Sketch 2. Next, select the sketch and here is the code. Since I already edited the user config.h file before uploading the sketch, now all I need to do is attach my C64 play on tape to my computer and upload the code. 
Once plugged in, on the drop down I select the Arduino Nano. Note that if you haven't already selected the board type or COM port number, you may need to do this first. If at any point you receive a warning about making sure the agent is installed and running, you either need to download and install the Arduino Create agent or run it if it's already installed on your computer. If you receive this message and you're unsure what to do, just click the Learn More button on the message. To upload the code to the C64 Play on Tape, with the Tapuino.ino tab selected, click the Upload and Save button. Success, brilliant. I'm seeing int failed on the OLED display. This is nothing to be concerned about at the moment. It's only saying this because I don't have a micro SD card inserted. As soon as I insert a micro SD card and reboot the device, the error is cleared. The device doesn't need a USB connection for it to work. It receives power directly from the Commodore 64 via the tape connector. Let's test it out. Type load and press return, just like you would when loading from a regular dataset. Then on the C64 play on tape, press the play button and enter the play mode. Then use the fast forward and rewind buttons to locate the C64 tap file you wish to load. I've converted TinyQuest into a tap file to experience a modern game loading at 1980s speed. Let's start the timer and speed this section up a bit. Three minutes and 18 seconds, not too long as far as tape games go. Tiny Quest was released in 2020 and is available from itch.io. It is a fantastic little platformer with an emphasis on time, or rather lack of time. Each screen is cleared by moving from left to right, avoiding obstacles and enemies, collecting the coin and reaching the other side before your very limited time runs out. Note that TinyQuest is only available for download as a D64 file and not a TAP file, so in order to load it today I've had to convert it to a TAP file first. So the C64 Play on Tape handles loading games just great. What about saving? I'll enter these two lines of code. We can see this working by typing run and hitting return. 
run stop to quit. Typing list does exactly that, it lists the code. And typing save on a Commodore 64 gives the possibility to save to tape. The computer is now waiting for a command from the dataset, or in this case, the C64 play on tape to say that recording has started. To get to the record options, repeatedly press the stop button until reaching the main menu. Then press the fast forward button to navigate to record. Press the play button to enter the record menu. We have a choice of manual or auto. I'm going to press the fast forward button and play to select auto. And finally, press the play button to start recording. We receive feedback from both the Commodore 64 and the C64 play on tape to say that the save process has completed. So that was the C64 play on tape device by Lunday. And I think you'll all agree it's fantastic. It's reasonably priced. So hop on over to pcbway.com now and purchase the boards to build your own one and help bring your C64 back to life and experience games like they were meant to be experienced in the 1980s. To see a Commodore 64 floppy drive emulator by the same designer, click this link. And to watch a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy, click this link. Until next time, take care.